Hello everyone, bit of a different video today. I'm here with the boys from We Are Tottenham TV. I'm in um, enemy territory, mm. uh, previewing the game for this Thursday. Thank you so much, boys, for uh, letting me use your My studio. pleasure. Uh, I know, it was very <laughs> short notice. I've just come back from a weekend away, so I'm not feeling in the best of spirits. But listen, the, the games against West Ham and Tottenham, they're never friendly. They're never easy for either team, I don't think. You know, we don't like to lose. We don't like to lose to each other. Um, I think... <laughs> How have you dealt? I'll, I'll go into this one because Arsenal got to come into the conversation. How have you dealt this season with losing your best player? Because I think we're in a very similar position. We lost the hub of our team, but how have Tottenham dealt with that? And how have you know have you had so much success without Harry Kane? I think like um, it's kind of been a new era with a new manager coming in, a new way of playing football, brand new signings, and a completely new philosophy. I think it kind of worked in our favour. I think it was actually a there's never a good time to lose Harry Kane because Harry Kane, from in my opinion, is the best player in the world right now. But I think that with the new philosophy, I felt it was a good opportunity for us to really just switch it up completely. Harry Kane's gone now. Sonny is leading, is spearheading the team. And I feel like we can actually, instead of just going through one man the whole time, we, we pretty much were the Harry Kane team uh, last season with him scoring 30 goals in a terrible side. Now it's kind of like we've got a proper philosophy about us. We, we attack in numbers, really in numbers. We're creating so many chances. It's not just all about Harry Kane creating those chances and scoring those chances. It's more about the whole team working towards a goal together instead of just being one man. So I think it's actually worked in our favour in a strange way. Mm. Yeah, and I would say losing a figurehead like Harry Kane who was the face of the club, it was obviously a massive loss. It was very daunting. But what we gained in, in Ange, I feel like, I feel Ange has now become the figurehead and he's become the thing in the club that everyone believes in before it was like we always had Harry Kane but now Ange is kind of dismantling that and the way he's got us playing football right now and and then it's and the way we everyone sees the project it's just so exciting and I think um, that is what has got everyone on side and you would have thought you know after losing Harry Kane maybe the place um, you know people would have been very angry and maybe it would have turned toxic but it's actually just being the opposite losing Harry Kane and um having Ange Postecoglou come in uh, and the start of the season that we've had, it's more the performances and how we see this project going, how we see the team playing and how we see what Ange is saying in the press conferences and how he's got everyone believing and, and the whole squad together. That has kind of replaced what Kane was to us. So we needed something desperately to, uh, to replace Kane and it wasn't going to be a player. And I think we got it in Ange. Is, is it because Ange is so different? That you, you know, the place feels. I mean, there's that you know, the famous tagline Spursy, yeah, right? It, 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 we all know what Spursy is, but it doesn't seem Spursy this season, mm. you know what I mean? Like, be, even when you're losing games, you, you're not turning around and going, Oh, that's, that's typical Spurs, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the Chelsea game, even the Villa game to a certain extent, they you, you know, your fans are coming out positive, you, yeah, your fans are coming out positive. So, what, what is what you know, is, is it just Ange that's brought that positivity back? Well, how are you? I think it is. I think Ange has completely changed the face of the football club on his, by himself. But I think it's everything that he's brought with him with the philosophy of style of play, never give up, never stop. It's like we never stop. You never stop till the end of the game. And it's always going forward. How do you get forward? How do you move forward? The centre-backs are flying up the pitch. The full-backs are flying up the pitch. Everyone is just flying up the pitch at all times. It's just such an exciting thing to see. And the fans are buying into that completely. And you're seeing 4-1 loss at home to Chelsea. And you're thinking... Last year, that team would have got berated and booed and mm. chastised off that pitch. Now, they're getting clapped off the pitch and they're getting jeered and, you know, they're like basically seeing what he's trying to do. And we're all, and it's going back to the whole old Tottenham philosophy, the push and run play, attacking football. We haven't had that for so long. It's just a complete breath of fresh air. And it's not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. Everything he says in the press conferences, every, that's what Spurs fans can resonate with. And he, I think like he just fits this club perfectly. Like mm. a hat, like a glove on a hand. Yeah, yeah. You know, I completely. I mean, I, I can't add too much. To that I complete echo uh, what Ben is saying about Ange um, the start of the season. I think it's just such a difference to lot to what we were getting last season in terms of, even though in a weird way results. I think points wise, we're actually quite in a similar way to where we were going last season. But 
it's just a manner of how we want to play football. Tottenham have, um, in in history, have been known for being an attractive football side. That's what the fans have always wanted to see. That has always been in the DNA of the football club to play attractive football. And that's why these previous managers, even though, even when results were going their way, they still had their detractors in the fan base, even when we were getting good results because of the football we were being served up. Uh, some of it's anti-football, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. We have the same, yeah, because we, you know, we've got the same, look, we've, li- look, we've never won trophies and over fist, but we like to see entertaining football. And that you know, with the with the, the way the game's gone at the moment, you know, in the terms of like you know playing out from the back and everything's got to be played from the goalkeeper and, and all this sort of stuff. I mean, you see mistakes week in week out, apart from the big sides that are doing it, but it slows the game down and it you know it makes it very a boring watch. You know, it's like more like a game of chess. You know, I, I was saying to you earlier, I just I, I, I miss the days when it was just two teams going at each other. Mm-hmm. That's what I saw with the Tottenham game the other day. You know, well, I watched the West Ham game. Um, the one-one draw with Palace. And it was just two teams that didn't want to attack, that yeah. didn't want to lose the game, you mm. know. And it was just like that. And then I watched the Tottenham and, and Man City game. It was the com- complete opposite. It was just two teams, you know, butting heads and all that. And, and I think that's that's a good philosophy to have. It's a and, breath of fresh air, isn't it? But you know, but saying that, what you've just said there, you know, going back to West Ham, do you understand where we come from? Because there's a lot of fans that turn around, like you know, there's a few fans that are Moyes in, a few fans that are Moyes out. I'm a Moyes neutral. I'm going to say that. But, you know, if he went, I wouldn't be bothered if he, if he stayed. Look, it's just another season in my eyes. But do you understand where we're coming from in terms of, like, that's not what we we want to see in terms of the entertainment factor? Yeah. yeah I, even though we've won a trophy, you know. Some people are thinking, you know, I turn around and say Moyes out. But people say, it's just one of your first trophy in 45 years or whatever it is. Yeah, but you need to see a long time. Project. Project, you need to see yeah. a long-term goal. And with the players that you do have, the Paquetas, you know, top, top player, Kudas, top, top player, Jared Bowen, Ward Prowse, you know, these players in your team, you need to see something for it. And I think, look, you're in an okay position in the league. I don't think you're going to complain about where you are in the league. But when you're watching your team play and the t- players that you do have, it should be something completely different. And you should be seeing a team playing good attacking football because that's the players that you've got. And I think Moyes should be utilising them a lot better. And I think West Ham fans are probably right to have a bit of the hunt with Moyes because I don't, I mean, from an outsider looking in, I don't see a long-term plan there with David Moyes. I think that you need to be getting a young, progressive manager that can utilise these players a lot more. Yeah, he done very well to win you the Conference League last year and credit to him. But I think sometimes you just got to end on a high. And I think that was probably the best option for West Ham last season. At the end of the day, if you lose that final, he probably would have got sacked, wouldn't he? That's, I would, that, I would that, say so, yeah. Yeah, because you were, you were battling relegation for a large part of last season. Um, up until the last stage, you pulled it together. You then went and won the Conference League. But I think everyone, it, I think I think a lot of West Ham fans, especially I, I've got a West Ham um, sporting uncle, his season to go, he was definitely saying, you know, even after that win, I think that's just the best time to just go your separate ways. You, you don't end it in a bad way. And now it just seems like it can only end in a bad way. I don't see Moyes... I think he's peaked. Let's be honest. Yeah. yeah. You f- what, you finished what sixth in the league one year or seventh in the league? Um, six and then seventh. Six yeah. and seventh. Is he ever going to get any higher than that? He then wins a cup. Like how much better is it going to get? I th- yeah. And and as well, you're getting all these players in like Kudus and Packet uh, and you know got really good attacking players. Like I'm looking at Villa's team. I'm looking at Newcastle's team, Brighton's team, teams who are above West Ham at the moment, who you probably see yourselves in competition with. And I think a lot of your players would get into their team. A lot of them. And I and I watch you as you say against Palace and uh, get, uh, I know Burnley won in the end, but I'm watching those games. I'm like, how do you have these amazing players in the forward line and you can't string two passes together and you and it looks so stodgy and you're still playing this boring football and it's almost as if Moyes doesn't know what to, like what to do with him. exactly. It's yeah. almost like he needs that Antonio because that's how what he that's what he knows. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what he knows how to use. Well, all the forwards that we've bought, you know, we, you look, we had Sebastian Hilaire, we've had. Um, Skamaka. Skamaka, Skamaka, you know they're good quality players. They're mm. doing really well. Look at Skamaka's doing at the moment. Doing great in Italy. The same as what, what Hilaire was. Mm. Hilaire's at Borussia Dortmund. You know, mm. and it, you, you can't be a, a coincidence that it, you know he has all these amazing players. That they're amazing everywhere else. Even Danny Ings to a certain extent. Mm. But you keep on reverting back to a 34, yeah. 35 year old Antonio. That can't be good. That can't be good because it just shows your limitations. I think. And, I, and I kept saying, like, Antonio, he's been a good servant for West Ham, but if you're really going to push on for where you are, you, he needs to be upgraded. That's, everyone knows it. But Moyes 
keeps because he runs the channels because he's big and physical and strong and because he's a focal point that's the only way Moyes knows how to play mm. and that must and when you've got all these un, incredible players and you're still serving up that kind of football if I'm a West Ham fan as much as I respect Moyes it's there for all to see I think everyone can see that 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 team should be playing better football than it is you look I think that, it's obvious you look at that Burnley game alone right I know you won in the end but that for 85 minutes in that game. So that's a team that hasn't won at home. It's you know what I mean? And, and not only, yeah, they're leaking goals left, right and centre. Yeah. Everyone's saying Vincent Company's too naive to, to manage in this league with this kind of team. And I, before the game, I was like, West Ham are going to absolutely wipe the floor mm. with Burnley with the kind of players that they have and the attacking talent. And you just about got over the line the last five minutes with some magic from Kudus, which, you know, individual quality is kind of pushing you through at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, do you know what? Yeah. Do you think, that, that all being said, right, and I'll ask you about you first. Do you think in the past you've overexpected? So you've put too much pressure and maybe this is not, you know, you're not expecting anything this year and that's why we're having success? Probably. I think when you hire Mourinho, I think there was more Mourinho than Conte maybe where the expectation came from. Because I think Conte, we were in a crisis when Conte came in and we just needed a world-class manager and he did turn things around. Maybe in that second season, we probably expected, or a lot of people were saying we could be in a title challenge. We finished fourth, where's to go? You know, you want to progress from that. And maybe that expectation as well um, led to fans uh, being disgruntled. I think under Mourinho, especially when we had a very popular manager in Pochettino, would, when the club take a decision to sack him even though at that time maybe we weren't in the bet we weren't in a very good way but still he was still popular I think among the fan base at the time that side for the rebuild right he yeah exactly right. and they took the decision to sack him you bring in a, a, Mar a Marino who's won a trophy ever he's been so the expectation had to be I think with most Spurs fans at that time it was we'll, we'll we'll put up with this as long as we get the trophy. If we get the trophy, then whatever, we'll put up with it. And we never and we never got that trophy. But the Except expectation, the the exactly. And the expectation was we're going to get a trophy with this manager. And so when it became clear that we aren't going to win a trophy with him, then that's when it turned very, very toxic. So right now, I, like, even though we went out of the Carabao Cup, and look, there's a very big chance we won't win a trophy this season. You know, our only chance really is FA Cup. But I don't think that expectation is there this season. It's definitely given the the fans and the, and the players a new lease of life for sure this season. And I think we're just enjoying the ride at the moment. And do, yeah. do you think we over-expect? I mean, it depends what you expect. I don't know what you guys are expecting, but I think on the back of a Conference League win, I think you want to kind of build on that success, right? And I just don't think that's possible with David Moyes at the helm. Like I said before, I think... You need to go back to basics and, and, you know, West Ham have always been known for attacking football and, and good football. And I think you need to get back to that and, and build on that. I think you've got a good team. You really do have a good team. Probably the best team I've known West Ham to ever have yeah. in terms of personnel. So I think Moyes ain't the right manager for that. You need to kind of get a young progressive manager who can get the best out of these players. And I think good things will come from there. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get to the game uh, this Thursday. Then Thursday night is a weird one for West Ham Tottenham. I mean, that's... I think it's asking for trouble, if I'm Definitely honest. Asking if I'm for honest. Trouble. Um, but yeah, Thursday night, uh, under the lights at White Hart, well, is it the new White Hart? We'll call it, call, it call it the White They call it the Tottenham Hotspur. The fans call it, still call it the White Hart Lane. We'll call it White Hart Lane. For, uh, only if you call as a bowling still. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll call it White Hart Lane. Um, under the lights at White Hart Lane, it's going to be a ferocious mm -hmm. one. Um, how do you see it going? I mean, what sort of injuries you got? What sort of shape you oh, coming into it? In? What sort of injuries don't we have? Yeah. We've got in. We've got depleted squad. We've got about ten injured players going into this. Van der Ven, who's been unbelievable for us, he has been, yeah, he's been injured. Good. Madison is out. Um, so we've got a lot of injuries coming into it. Those are the probably the two key ones. We're lucky that Hyung Min Son hasn't been injured because he's been unbelievable for us. Kuti Romero, we're going to recover him from his suspension, so that's big for us. Um, finally, for the last three games, we haven't had a recognised centre back playing, and that's been a massive detriment to us. So I think it'll be a massive plus for Kuti Romero to come back in the side. Look. I think you know what you're going to get with Spurs. You're going to get gung-ho attacking football. And I think it's going to play into our hands, to be honest. I think West Ham will kind of try and sit back, try and soak it up, try and hit us on the counter-attack. And I think that plays in your hands. Yeah, it? exactly. So I think with you sitting back and letting us have the possession, I think we've got the players that can really hurt you. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. if you have the team or the tactics to try and play through us, yes, we're going to be aggressive, but with the players you have, I would be a lot more fearful. But with the way I know Moyes likes to play, I think he'll come with a plan and it will be to try to frustrate us. But I think we want teams to do that. I think we want to play against a low block so we can actually 
play our football if you allow us to have that space to play our football and play yeah, through that, you to, that, that three quarters of the field that you're playing in is, mm. where, is where you really play isn't it exactly we want to be uh, I think actually a lot of the trouble we've had this season is when teams have taken us on and been aggressive against us and stopped us playing high up the pitch yeah, but they make you think yeah, you know when they make you think you got to defend, and yeah. it, it stifles your game. I've seen it. I've seen the way they bomb him forward, and they've got the, the fullbacks bombing forward, and the, uh, and the uh, centre midfielders getting into the box, and you know, hanging around. it's it's it worries me. I'm going to be honest, it worries me for this because because they're normally a good game. We normally go there. Look, we all know that we you call it our cup final. We you know, and we call it your cup final. <laughs> nonsense, but you know, but you know, it, you know, we raise our game for this one. You know, mm-hmm. and London derbies and all that. So. I'm just. I just don't see. I don't, I don't see how. I, I can't see how this one's going to go. But that's why I always going into this picture with a, just that little bit of apprehension. Because when I'm looking at the two teams and the way, the way they both play their football, I would usually say it's probably going to be an easy win for Tottenham. But when it's Tottenham against West Ham, I think that it's always goes easy, out the window. No. That always goes out the window. And West Ham, whenever they come to Spurs, they always raise their game. It's just a fact of matter. Yeah. It's like a fact of life, pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, but how do you see this one going? I do, I do I do see us winning the game. I think on the back of three losses and, and a draw and a really good draw at Man City has got to be said. I think we'll take a lot of confidence from that Man City yeah. game, I think. And I think we're going to come out of this and have a really fast start to the game. Uh, with Romero back, like I said before, is going to be a massive, massive plus for us and really going to help us combat uh, maybe aerially and also your set pieces where you're really dangerous at. So I see a lot of goals flying in, in mm. this one. Um, I said 2-0 on your preview, but now like kind of rethinking it, I think there might be a few more goals in it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so I'm going for a big scoreline. And I'm actually going to go, Sim said 3-1 in the preview, so I want to go a bit different to that. So I'll go 3-2. Three, 3-2. Two. Three, two. Yeah, I, I, I said 3-1. I'm going I'm to stick to that. But I do. I think we're going to be creating chances in this one. I think you're going to try and stop us. But I think the way we're playing football at the moment, even with the injuries, we've, we've, we've found a bit a new for, new way of playing with Lo Celso and Kulisevsky in centre mid and backed up by Basuma. And it's actually, we found a new dynamic to the team, which we didn't have even earlier in the season. And I'm really liking the chance creation I'm seeing. Two creative players, strong players as well. And I think, look, if West Ham... Are, are good in the transition they'll be I mean Bowen's one of the best transition players there, there is yeah. uh, uh, on the counter attack Kudus is a, is a wonderful player if you get him on the ball um, so I do expect West Ham you know to, to create chances but I just think they're going to allow Tottenham <coughs> to dominate the ball they're going to they're not going to be pressing high they're going to allow Tottenham to build up as well and I think that would be a mistake and I think I can see Tottenham would you know with the way they like to play their inverted fullbacks clog up the central area and, and have getting those passing interchanges I just I think if West Ham let us play our football, I think we will, and that's why I think we'll win three one. But that's the thing, right? If we get caught high up the pitch, we don't have Mickey Van Der Ven's recovery pace. Um, Do you know what? The, back. the only thing mm. I would say about that, right? And I, I would counter because uh, I was thinking about this as well. I was, I was thinking we like to play on the counter, and um, and we know you play a high line, so a ball over the top. But I don't think we've got the pace to to catch it. Who really is? don't? Bowen. Bowen's not that fast. I thought he was oh, quite he's not fairly that quick. quick. No, he's not. He ain't got like that, you know, that electric lightning pace. I just can't see. Kudos, maybe. I, I, to be honest with you, the way we've play, been playing lately, the, you know, the, the reserve way we play, I haven't really seen him open his legs and go. Mm. You know, he's always get, get, got the ball with backs to defenders. So from what I've seen, he looks fast from his days at Ajax and, and you know, in yeah, the World Cup yeah. with Ghana and so, stuff. Yeah, I don't really know what's, what, what you know, uh, this could be a game where we see this for the first time, you know, playing that ball over the top because Wal Prowse has got. Yeah, you know, he, he, he can pick out a pass from anywhere, same as Pakatar. So, I think it'd be an interesting one. I'm going to go for a two-two. I'm going to go for a two-two, and I said two-two on your guys' channel. But this is either going to be one of the games where it's going to be a two-two, or it's going to be a five-nil to Tottenham. <laughs> Let's that's, hope for the latter. That's, eh? that's going to be one <laughs> Let's of the, hope it's for one the latter. Of the games, and Son has a great record against yeah, West Ham. He he he's playing, a playing well. Record. He's playing well. Yeah, he's been excellent. But boys, thank you so much. Uh, Thanks I'll for having me on. Mate. I won't mean it. That's funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Uh, go and see the video that I've done on the guys on We Are Tottenham TV. Uh, go and give them a sub as well. Um, so hopefully we can laugh at them on the first. That's an influx of West Ham fan abuse. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> every year, every no, no, year. We'll cut it, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, go, go and sub to the guys. Thanks for joining us. One thing less to say from me: Come on, you ass. Come on, Spurs. 